Hello and welcome to Storytime. Today we're going to read Ruby's Hope, a story of how the famous migrant mother photograph became the face of the Great Depression. Ruby's Hope was written by Monica Culling and illustrated by Sarah Zvojak. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and ask your parents to do the same so you don't miss any of our stories. Let's begin. Ruby's Hope by Monica Culling. Ruby and her family were slow to leave Oklahoma. In 1929, the stock market crashed. Millions lost their savings, their jobs, and their homes. Then came the drought. The ground grew nothing but thistles and dust. Dust buried tractors, killed cattle, and billowed into blizzards that turned day into night. Years later, food was getting harder to find. Leaving seemed to be the only thing left to do. Ruby was seven. Her older brother Leroy and her sister Viola were keen to go, but Ruby didn't want to budge. She loved Big Sky, Oklahoma. The babies, Catherine and Norma, were quiet on the subject. Ruby was watering a thistle that grew near the house. She had once had baby chicks to feed, but they all had died. Don't waste water on that weed, Ruby, said Ma, fighting with the wind to hang a line of wash. Weeds are tougher than we are. Got that right, said Pa, resting on the front steps. Time we were gone. Annie Folker Stain, said Ruby. Her Pa says one day the skies will split wide and rain's gonna fall and never stop. That may happen, said Ma, but we won't be here to see it. One morning, Ruby woke to find everyone busy. Pa and Leroy were fixing the car. Ma and Viola were packing up the kitchen. Ruby, mind the baby, said Ma. We're leaving today. So soon, said Ruby. She felt her stomach drop. It was all happening too fast. The Hudson Super 6 was packed tightly with everything needed to live on the road. A lantern, pots to cook and wash in, a big fry pan, and coffee pot, plates and cups, spoons, knives and forks, clothes and tools. Two mattresses held it all down. It was time to hit the road. Ma and the baby sat in front. Leroy and Viola sat up top. Only Ruby wasn't budging. She was standing still, staring at the farm. Stop your dreaming, Ruby, said Ma. They've got blue skies in California, too. Come on, urged Viola. Ruby wanted to remember every detail of the place she had always called home. When she was ready, Leroy and Viola hauled Ruby up front, and the car rumbled west towards Route 66, the road that crossed the country. It took two weeks and many flat tires to reach the rich fields of California. Ruby couldn't get over how green everything was. Straight off, the family had found work picking lettuce. When they heard about a pea crop ready for picking outside of a town called Nipomo, they pointed the car in that direction. 
We may run out of gas, said Pa. We'll get to the camp even if we have to drive on fumes or push the truck, said Ma with a determined look. It sometimes seemed to Ruby that Ma pushed hopes to its limits. Lying on the mattress, Ruby gazed at the drifting clouds. Out of the blue, she said, lettuce makes me sick. They'd picked lettuce for over a week. You'll soon be saying the same about peas, said Viola. Picking anything is tough work, agreed a yawning Leroy. It was especially hard for Ruby, who wasn't very strong, but she tried her best. She was helping, and that made her happy. Pa drove the sputtering Hudson onto the dirt road, and that's where the gas ran out. The car coasted to a stop just inside the camp. The next morning, Ruby woke to the feel of icy air in her nose and mouth. There had been a hard frost overnight, and the pea crop was ruined. What'll we do now, Pa, said Leroy. We'll try and get work in town, replied Pa, and then we'll move on. In nearby Nipomo, Pa and Leroy took any job going, even street sweeping. Days passed and food dwindled. Ruby's hope dwindled too. But not Ma's. Every day she cooked a little bit extra so that the kids who crowded around their campfire might get a bite or two. Ruby was the first to see the car and the woman with the black box. My name's Dorothea, she said, shaking Ruby's small hand. This is my camera. What's your name? Ruby. How long have you been in this camp, Ruby, said Dorothea. Ruby didn't often talk to strangers, but this lady seemed kind and eager to listen. Ruby told the photographer about leaving the farm where the trees, the garden, and the animals had all died. Now the peas are dead too, and our food is running out, and we have no money for gas. Don't lose hope, Ruby, said Dorothea. When I was your age, I got a disease that left me with a twisted foot. I thought I'd never walk again, but here I am. Ruby had noticed the limp. Why are you carrying a camera? The government hired me to take photographs of migrant farm workers. Suddenly, Ruby had an idea. Would you like to take my mama's picture? Dorothea wanted to, so Ruby led her to her family's lean-to. They skirted a large icy pond. The photographer walked slowly, but Ruby ran ahead. Ma, this lady wants to take our picture. Dorothea Lang introduced herself. She told Ma about the government program that gave photographers like herself work recording the damage done to farmers by the depression. May I take your picture? People who see it will realize how hard life is for migrant workers. Ma gave the stranger a long, hard look. Her clothes weren't new, but neither were they dirty and torn, and her voice sounded big city. But the photographer's eyes were kind, so Ma agreed. Take your picture, though I don't want to see what good, though I don't see what good they'll do. We need gas to leave this place. We need food, not photographs. Dorothea worked slowly and carefully. She put Ma at ease by talking about her own children, whom she hadn't seen in a month, all while inching closer. Dorothea Lang took six pictures, one after the other, and then got back in her car and left. The most famous of the six came to be called Migrant Mother.
When the photograph of the mother with her children made the newspapers, people opened their hearts again. Again, Ruby was the first to spot the trucks the day they rolled into camp. They brought 20,000 pounds of food and something more precious, hope. And that was the story of the photograph of the migrant mother. Ruby's Hope is based on real people and actual events. The day Dorothea Lang took a photograph of a migrant farm worker and three of her children. This story is historical fiction. In my story, I've used the names of the family members, but reimagined the events leading up to the taking of the photographs. For example, Ruby didn't lead Dorothea Lang to the mother, Florence Owens Thompson, but rather Lang found her subject. I saw and approached the hungry and desperate mother as if drawn by a magnet. When the photo was taken, Thompson's husband, who in this story is a composite of multiple real life characters and, her, and two of her sons, had gone into town to get a part to fix the car's radiator. Thank you for joining us for the story of Ruby's Hope. Make sure to check back as we often upload new stories. We would love for you to subscribe and like our channel.